it's interesting. I, I came in this morning um, from the house uh, um, I grew up in, uh, where I now live, uh, where I used to come in on my Honda 50 uh, to this uh, uh, to this erstwhile institution uh, 40 years ago, uh, and I came in on the uh, on the Lewis. But look, um, before uh, I talk about that, I just wanted to tap my hat to uh, uh, one of our year of 1983. And Simon, unfortunately, was buried last Friday, and it would be remiss of me not to, not to mention him in passing. Very loved by by <clears throat> all of our year for sure. And and so the story did begin. Look at it. <laughs> and uh, and this was to me uh, 40 years ago. Um, yeah, the epitome of, of medicine. I remember my late mother being very upset when she figured out I was going to leave that institution after three years and couldn't understand why I wasn't there for life. Um, and uh, but Jervis Street was in some ways ahead of its time. You know, it was it was a casualty department, and it was where the injured and the ill uh, of, of inner city Dublin were were brought to to be looked after. And many of them looked after this uh, by this wonderful man, uh, Leo Bella, uh, with David Curtis, uh, my, my colleague there in the background, and that's Leo uh, looking at all Dave's missed fractures uh, the next day. Um, and, and, and it was a, a, a teaching session and uh, we had a majors area and a, a minors area and a theatre and a resuscitation room uh, and a short stay ward. You know? um, sort of things that many emergency departments today would, uh, would strive for. And uh, for me, that, that gave me a grow. Or, or, uh, to me, I thought, gosh, this is, this is something I could do. And I, I spent my Saturday nights as a, a student you know, after rugby matches going in there to stitch up other rugby players. And I said to Leo, look, how can I do what you do? And he said, go and visit uh, uh, the king, who told me he wasn't the king, he was only the crown prince uh, of emergency medicine, William Rutherford, who was in charge of the Royal Victoria in Belfast. And these, were, of course, were, were troubled times. And so I went up and I said, look, what should I do? And there was, there was no train, formal training program to work in casualties um, at that time. And he said, look, you, there is a degree now from the Royal College of Surgeons in Edinburgh, but you have to have a primary for the medicine as a surgeon. So you have to work and work your way up and, and, and uh, uh, so, so stay in Dublin and work. So I did, you know, and I, I went around the houses and uh, from James's and the old Vincent's and, and Temple Street and uh, uh, spent a number of years in Gerber Street getting my, my, my primary in medicine and then off up to Temple Street to do my paediatrics. Uh, and then successfully achieved uh, uh, the, the fellowship with the Royal College of Surgeons in Edinburgh uh, and, and became a mister. And I thought, wow, I've, I've really arrived. Um, but uh, there was a desire to get some more formal training and, and uh, the specialty was moving on uh, from the governing body of the CSA. I don't know if you can work it out, the Casualty Surgeons Association, uh, where there was a training program in the UK. And I tried to tell the, the handful of merry men of consultants in emergency medicine here uh, to get a training program. And you know I'll go if you don't. And, uh, um, and, and so um, they said, well, we will, but they didn't. Um, so I took the boat, uh, the, 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 the airline boat to, uh, uh, to London. And uh, I said to Susie that okay, this will teach them, you know, um, they, they will set up a training program when they see I'm going. Uh, and then I had to call her and say, it's good news and bad news. Um, the, uh, the the bad news is uh, they've offered me a job over here, and uh, the good news is well we don't have to start until January, uh, so maybe they'll get a training program. Of course they didn't get a training program, so um, I got trained by the British Association for for accident and emergency medicine as it was then, and it was exciting times and there was developments and and I could see things developing and and, and the faculty uh, of, of accident and emergency medicine took over from the British Association to be the academic side and. Uh, to be the regulator of uh, of exams, and there was a real happening. This, this is the crest. It's interesting. Uh, I guess if we were devising it in, in, in uh, the, today, it would probably be well woman on the left and injured man on the right. Uh, but that's uh, injured man on the left and uh, injured man on the left is the other and and well man there. And uh, the the zigzag is for electricity for defibrillation. And the, the of course the the, the poppy is opium for uh, for morphine and so much we give and um, the, the, the moon and the sun at the top is to show that we give we deliver care right across the day night and day and uh, others are, and the, the grass on the, the at the bottom is the dock leaves on the on the right for uh, uh, for treating the injuries that occur from the uh, the poisonous uh, ivy on the left. So a lot of thought gone went into that, and a lot of thought went into developing the specialty. So I, I fronted up to the Royal Sussex County Hospital in Brighton, 
similar sort of hospital to over here, but uh, uh, the things were moving and the specialty was developing and becoming academically stronger. I moved from there to King's College and, and, and completed my uh, higher specialist training in King's College in, in London, where I was appointed as a consultant. Uh, and there was exciting times ahead. There was advanced trauma life support courses, there was advanced cardiac life support courses, advanced pediatric life support courses. Resuscitation had become a real uh, uh, specialty in itself, and, and, and we were the owners of that. Uh, and so it became a really exciting time. And things were happening around the world. Uh, I've got my fellowship in, 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 uh, in, in emergency medicine, and and you could see that the American College of Emergency Medicine had was 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 growing as, as was the Australian College and as was the European Society of Emergency Medicine and and uh, I, I was uh, by the president of, of the first ever Asian Society uh, for Emergency Medicine meeting, so I said, "Ooh, well, time to move to some of these these further fields," and and I moved to uh, Westmead, not Westmeath, uh, which is in Western Sydney Trauma Centre. Uh, and spent time there uh, and, and, and made some real friends for life and huge exciting time and learning more and doing research on trauma systems and trauma care in particular uh, that I was going to be able to bring back. And then the old Royal Sussex County Hospital was investing and, and uh, built the new Sussex Medical School. They wanted a senior lecturer. They came knocking on the door and come back. And I thought, well, maybe it'll be a stepping stone to come back to Dublin eventually. So I came back and uh, I was thrown in on top of the British Association for Emergency Medicine. I became a chair of the Publications Committee and the Emergency Medicine Journal, who somebody mentioned this morning, John Horgan, the cardiologist uh, from Richmond, whose, whose daughter was uh, my right-hand uh, person in, in helping me lead out on, on the Emergency Medicine Journal. Um, and, and, and it was a, an exciting time, you know, there, there was ultrasound was, 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 was coming into the domain of emergency medicine. Uh, we, were, we were becoming leaders and taking it away from radiology a little bit. Uh, and it was exciting developments, you know, this time is muscle. There was opportunities for us to be at the cutting edge to, 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 to reperfuse heart muscle, to reperfuse uh, brain and, uh, and thrombectomies. Uh, and, and from a time in, in casually when maybe you could put in some stitches, um, and, and admit somebody who'd had a myocardial infarction for, to rest in bed for 10 days. Now we were at the cutting edge of making the, the, the real, inter, real interventions. Uh, and Manny Rivers uh, produced his work on, 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 on the early goal-directed therapy in sepsis. And, and clearly emergency people were, were leading the world in, in cutting edge research in, in emergencies. So a hugely exciting time. Uh, and, and I planned to come home um, and, and, and was a benefit of the tiger economy. Um, and uh, the minister at the time said, well, we're going to have more emergency medicine consultants in Ireland. That's what we need. We need more emergency medicine consultants. Uh, so I got back on the plane and came home. Um, and, uh, and, and I came home to Vincent's where it was fantastic. There was people like Brian Mora who was... I would go to and say, look, well, we need, you know, we need to connect to place is, is out and I sent three and we should be thrombolizing with, with this. He said, yeah, how, how many do we need? Really? Um, okay, well, maybe a hundred a year. Yeah, I'll sign the check. God, this is easy. Uh, there's money everywhere. We can make things happen. Uh, and we built a brand new state-of-the-art uh, emergency department. And things were really exciting. Uh, the uh, Irish Association for Emergency Medicine uh, stood up and, and took ownership for emergency medicine in Ireland uh, and, and became a real voice for uh, for the public in terms of emergencies. Um, on my second time round, when I was in London, I, 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 I won the award for to bring uh, the International Conference in Emergency Medicine, uh, which uh, every two years went around the world uh, to either Canada, the United States, uh, Australasia uh, or the UK. And, uh, and and the guys here said, well, you, yeah, you're before your time, we won't take it. Oh, my heart sank, I thought we, I could bring the world. But we did, in 2012, we brought the International Conference of Emergency Medicine uh, to, the, uh, the, to the conference center. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and there was history made, you know, in, in the ferryman across the road, something you'll remember, it was an early house, no doubt. Um, and uh, we invented foam, uh, which was free, open, accessible medication. Uh, which has become a real entity. There's a couple of specialties uh, in medicine that have really seized uh, the internet and online learning uh, as a forum for, for improving education. Emergency medicine is one of those. And, and foam has now become a real 
uh, a discipline itself. Uh, Google uh, Leonard Cohen, he gave us a shout out and uh, um, there's a little video clip of uh, Leonard Cohen saying, folks, you want to listen to this, this is coming down your tracks, this is really big, uh, listen to these guys. So we developed our own training program eventually, and I'm now the Vice Dean uh, for Advanced Specialty Training in Emergency Medicine in Ireland. And, and uh, I think we have 60 consultants now, and uh, when Leo was the first one, uh, we have 60 advanced trainings, and uh, each year we take in 26 core specialist trainees in, in emergency medicine. And of course, the faculty went uh, to become the College of Emergency Medicine, which also was very clever. You know, the Americans, in an inimitable way, so the American College of Physicians, the Australian College of Emergency Medicine, but, but we had the College of Emergency <laughs> Medicine. Um, and uh, uh, and taking after RCSI, we weren't happy with just being the college. We wanted to be the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, which we are now, and for which our, our trainees take uh, uh, take the exit exam. And the specialty has opened up its doors and given its trainees wonderful opportunities, whether that be in, say, pre-hospital uh, emergency medicine, pediatric emergency medicine, and now, of course, geriatric emergency medicine. Yesterday, I had 28 patients over the age of 75 in my department at one time. Uh, and some people have taken clinical toxicology as a, an area of special interest. Uh, for me, of course, it was, uh, as Mary said, it was sports medicine. Uh, and uh, I, I'm now uh, head medical officer for, for and team doctor for Leinster Rugby, um, as well as working with, with the IRFU and, and have uh, um, humbling experience of being able to look after uh, this man um, with one of his sort of uh, you know, moments where I have to take him, Johnny, you know, uh, get real sort of uh, conversations that we have. Uh, but but, it, but it's, 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 it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience and brings with it uh, wonderful opportunities for both personal and professional fulfillment and success. And, uh, and people spoke already today about the, the benefits of teamwork and, uh, and team involvement. But there are emergencies within emergency medicine as well. Of course, if any of you that, that uh, read the literature and read the newspapers, uh, we have uh, we're vic victims of our own success in, in many ways. Uh, primary care has been so fantastic in, 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 in looking after chronic and continuing care. And now preventing, I don't see myocardial infarctions. I don't, I don't see so many of these other illnesses that I used to see in Jervis Street because primary care means uh, we're now treating cardiac failure instead of cardiac arrests and so on. And so we've become very crowded as hospitals fill up. And of course, if there was one thing that, that brought huge impact on, on emergency medicine uh, in the last 40 years, it's BIS, which, which changed our frontier completely uh, in, in the last three years. And probably fuels the other challenge for us too, um, which is, is, is the brain drain. Um, and and uh, uh, now, you know, so many uh, of our graduates and of, of our trainees are not leaving as I did when I was completed my, my, my training to go to Australia, but leaving after their internship to, to go to Perth and go to, uh, go to Sydney. Um, and, and there are challenges. It's a, it's, the kids are different now. Uh, Martin Holt, one of, in 1983, um, had a recent stroke and a, a thrombectomy and, uh, with the emergency services. And he wrote uh, on, on our list uh, this of last week. I won't, uh, I won't put in the other little bit as well, maybe a bit pejorative, but uh, yeah, that's certainly true. So what lies in the future for this exciting specialty, which has gone from casualty to emergency medicine and, and uh, has led the world in so many areas? Well, within Ireland, we've, it's a, a trauma system. And so the, the right patient going to be seen in the right place at the right time by the right person in the right way. Uh, and and so, so that's exciting to be at that. Uh, the the older person uh, and, uh, is is uh, our core business now, and we've developed uh, Edith, uh, which is emergency department in the home, where we now have a car with a a, uh, a senior doctor and uh, an OT or physiotherapist going out to uh, the the community to to treat people in the community to avoid uh, hospital admission, and of course palliative care and and, and, and treating not people with cancer but people with uh, end of life illnesses uh, who have. Uh, a sudden deterioration and sudden emergency on top of their chronic condition is 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 that and, and indeed artificial intelligence and I mentioned uh, already about chat sheet and, and, 
and uh, yes, artificial intelligence is for sure going to be uh, an important part of, of the developing future of, of not only emergency medicine, but medicine in general. So look, thanks for your time. Um, it's been a, a whirlwind 40 years. I hope the next 40 years is good. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, at Kathleen at the age of 100 um, because uh, I still get energized, uh, thankfully, uh, because of the, the education I had at this wonderful college, uh, which, which which put me forward. And, and also because of, uh, and thanks to uh, my wonderful family who've uh, tolerated our, our, our travels around the world and uh, our involvement with so many things. Thanks for your time.